Hey guys, it's Greg Alexander again. And today I want to talk about jig heads, especially jig heads for shaky heads. And you really need to understand the difference in these shaky head jig heads to be able to effectively present your lure to a fish. And you know, if you just think that you can just tie on any old jig head any old time and it's gonna do just as well because that's the one that you always throw, then you're probably costing yourself bites you're probably costing yourself time. You're probably losing fish when you shouldn't be losing fish. So I wanna go over a pretty detailed explanation of which shaky head jig heads you need in which situations, which ones are best uh, under certain conditions. So, you know, most people understand what a shaky head is. I mean, they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes for a lot of different reasons actually a lot of people don't even you know kind of even think about that sometimes but a shaky head is basically a lead head on a hook a lot of times with a spring sometimes without a spring to twist your bait onto to hold it in place you know they come in sizes from a 16th all the way up to an ounce some really heavy jig heads would call uh, uh, big shakies, you know. So let's discuss, let's discuss first what I would call a standard shaky head jig head. This is an owner jig head. It's green pumpkin. I personally like to add little black dots with a black magic marker to it to kind of give the, the head a little bit more subtlety you would say and this has a four alt round bend hook on it but all four alt round bend hooks are not the same this is also a four alt round bend hook but it's it's a longer hook and it's a, actually a little bit bigger so you know everybody's four alt hook is not the same so for most shaky head situations when you're dealing with a finesse worm or a trick worm of whatever brand it is that you like to throw, then you know this standard size four alt, three alt or four alt round bend hook on an eighth ounce head ish, three thirty seconds, five thirty seconds is going to do the job for you under most circumstances. So, when would you throw something different? Well, you would throw something different when you're trying to get a different type of action. And the action of a shaky head is dictated by both the shape of the head and by the flatness of the head, you could say. This is a, what a standard shaky head, it's a round type head. It has a little bit of a flat area on it here to help it from falling over on the side. See, because they'll fall over on their side sometimes. If it's round, it just falls over. With a little bit of flatness on there, it keeps it in that position right there. And when you pull on this particular shaky head, look, see where the line tie is? If I hold it flat, it's about a 45 degree bend off of the side. So this shaky head is a moderate action shaky head. Why is it a moderate action? Because of where the line tie is. So let's look here. If you take this shaky head here, which the line tie is basically on the top, it's gonna to give you more action. I've tied a piece of line to this, and we're gonna put this in my hand here, if you can see that. And then when I pull on that shaky head, it's gonna stand up. See that? It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna stand up when I pull on it because it's trying to pull it like that. Whereas, this other one that I had, if I were to pull on that one, it's only going to stand up about half as, as high as the other one. So you're going to get more action out of a shaky head when the line tie is on the top than when it is on towards 45 or towards the nose. So if, you, if more action is better, then why would you ever even throw this one? Well, part of the reason you want to throw this one is when you want more subtle action because the fish are in a mood. 
and you would throw this one when you want more action. The water's a little bit dingier or the fish are more aggressive. Uh, cloudy day, things like that. But the problem with some of these line ties, especially this one, is the height of the post. See the line tie post there? See how tall that is? See how tall that is from here on up? It sticks way up off of the, the bait. Well, the higher it is up off of the bait, the more action you're gonna get out of it because it gives you more movement the higher it is. You know, if it was way up here and you just pulled it a little bit, this thing's gonna go all the way around. So it gives you more movement higher up. But here's the problem that you, it's kind of a give and take situation. If you got a high post, then what does that do? That interferes with the ability of the jig head to come out of the mouth of the bass and the hook to grab him in the lip, you understand? So when that's trying to come out of the mouth of the bass, if it sticks up too high and his mouth is closed, it catches on his mouth and the hook doesn't penetrate into the, the fish's mouth, you understand? Whereas, for example, if you had a bullet weight on the front of there, then there's nothing to catch except the hook coming out. So this particular bait, while it has more action, it has that higher post, it can cost you fish, lost fish. You set the hook and you're like, man, I just didn't get the hook in him. I don't know why. Well, that was probably why. So you can go with a jig head like this. See where the line tie is right down on top of the bait. There's not as much there to catch the fish's lip. And then Picasso actually makes one where the line tie is completely, almost completely recessed down into the head. So there's really nothing there at all hardly to interfere with the hook set. And with Picasso's jig head, the spring actually is way, 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 way softer than some of these other springs. So that spring can also, you know, cause some, some issues sometimes, you know, some guys don't even want to throw one with a spring on it because they feel like it, it interferes with the hook set. Well, I'm not in that particular group. I don't think that the spring bothers the hook set because the spring is on the back side of where the line is and it's coming out like this. And I don't think it has much to do with, with whether or not the, the fish get hooked or not. But some people in their mind, they don't like the harder springs or the bigger springs because they feel like it may interfere with the hook set. I don't think I've had that issue too much with, with that deal. So then if you take a shaky head that has the line tie right on the end, see right there on the very tip like that, then that's not gonna have any action at all. That's gonna, when you pull that, it's just gonna go straight, straight. It's not gonna kick up like these other two, depending on where the line tie is. So in my opinion, if you're gonna have a nose hook or a nose tie on a shaky head, you're probably better off just to put an eighth ounce bullet weight on there and peg it on top of your shaky head if that's what you want to do. And you know, why would you even have a, a, a nose tie one? Well, you know, to get through, it gets through wood and gets through grass better if it's on the nose than it is if it's around the side. Because that particular one right there, that's a catch. That catches structure too. That catches on wood. You're coming up over a branch you're coming up over a branch and it catches right there and you're like uh, 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 and a lot of times it'll get hung up because the line tie is actually catching on the structure or it eats grass holds a lot of grass you would want a big high line tie if you're trying to pull a shaky head through grass so the other action shaky head that you can have is what they call a stand-up shaky head and that's, you know, a lot of times when you're dealing with clear water situations and you want your bait just kind of standing right up and waving at the fish while you're coming through the water. You know, it, it's coming through 
let me kind of put this on here. It's coming through the water like this. You got me? It's not coming through and jumping up and jumping up or like this. It's coming through basically your, where that line tie is on this one. This is a spot remover. And the shape of the head being flat on top, it tends to want to sit like that in the water. Now, the one problem I found with the spot remover is a lot of times this thing wants to fall over. It wants to fall over on its side when you're pulling on it. And I can even probably even show you that. Sorry, my fax machine's going off here behind me. Uh, I could probably even show you that if you pull on it. See, when you pull on it, it, it just wants to roll over. So it, it's kind of, you know, see, I can get it lying right straight up and pull on it. And it just wants to fall over on its side. And that's what I find, you know, it's probably a misnomer that, you know, these things really just stand up all the time. I think a lot of times they're, 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 they're getting pulled through the water like this on their side just because of the shape of the head. It makes it want to roll over. So, but it's, it's a good bait. So then you've got a round ball head, which is good for most any shaky head situations. Again, if you're in a lot of cover, why even throw the round ball shaky head? You're going to want to throw a bullet weight or something that's going to come through the cover real, real good. And then you have your football shaped heads, which are, you know, they're best for rocky situations, sandbars, shell bars, open areas. They don't come through cover real, real good because the, the head is too wide and causes issues. But what's good about the, the uh, football head is it literally, when you're pulling on it, it literally does the shimmy. It walks like, it walks like that when you're coming through, through the, across the point or through the shell bed or down the drop off or wherever it is that you're, you're fishing. So let's talk about hook size too. See now, they're kind of hard to find, but I really like this EWG hook sometimes. See how this, you have this EWG hook on here, extra wide gap. And that's good for when you're throwing bulkier shaky hits. So, you know, you take your regular size shaky head and that'll work on there fine. But I would use this bigger one when you're throwing like these magnum finesse worms that have more bulk or you're throwing any type of stick worm as a shaky head on there, then it gives you that extra throat for the thickness of the worm where the worm doesn't basically eat the hook up and you don't have any hook left to get into the fish. See, because if you've got, you know, this, we'll just take this, this one here. You got this regular smaller hook and you put this magnum finesse worm on there then it pretty much takes up the whole round part of the hook and you you have very little hook left so on your bigger shaky heads if you can find those ewg style hooks then that's what you should throw in those situations and then there's another hook that People don't talk about it too much anymore, but back in the day, they talked about it a lot. And that's the slider style of shaky head. And a slider style shaky head, here it is. It's flat on the bottom, hooks on the top. This, what this does is this actually makes the shaky head skate. It'll skate. It'll almost act like a tube in the water. It'll skate this way and skate back this way and skate back this way. And that's a presentation that you can use when, you know, everybody's throwing regular shaky heads anymore. And you put a slider head on, you get a completely different action. And then the fish are like, well, what's that? I, that, that that's different. I'm not trained on that one yet. Let's go taste that and see what that tastes like. So, but the one disadvantage to the slider head is, man, it does not like cover, wood, because that line tie is here and the front thing is here. So you have this 
basically catch area right where my finger is where it catches on wood. So you need reasonably open cover to effectively fish this or you're constantly chasing it down, getting it unhung from what you're throwing it in. So then you can go with your extremely small straight shank shaky head, right? Where there's no screw lock on there at all. And in this situation, even though the post sticks up real high, when you thread that worm on there, the worm kind of eats up the post. You understand? The worm kind of eats up the post area. Although it's still a catch, I probably wouldn't choose to throw this most of the time. Uh, one thing you can do if you have a high post like that is you can literally stick it through. You can literally stick it through your shaky head, right? I've jammed that post right through the shaky head and tie it off there and use it as a hover stroll. Hover stroll is basically an open water technique where you're going to fish that shaky head with the weight farther back so that the lower will skate again and kind of acts kind of like it does with the, uh, the slider head that we had there. So, Baits on a shaky head are you're generally going to stick with your finesse type worms in all different sizes, shapes, and colors. Watermelon red, green pumpkin, black. If you only had three colors, that's all you need. And then dress it up with a little bit of chartreuse on the tail if you needed to. But don't forget that just because it's a shaky head don't mean you have to put a straight tail worm on there, right? You can put pretty much anything on there that you want. You can put crawl baits on there. You can put creature baits on there. You can use the shaky head and basically wacky rig it so that when it's coming through the bottom, you get a lot of action. There's a lot of ways to do it. You need to be creative with your shaky heads. And as far as colors go, man, I, I like mostly green pumpkin. Uh, unless I'm throwing a black shaky head, I'm going to throw some type of green pumpkin. And I don't like my green pumpkin to glow in the water. I like, if I'm throwing a shaky head, I want to be subtle. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not out there trying to throw bright colors or gaudy looking th things with a shaky head. Part of the mystique of a shaky head is it's subtle that the fish is not quite sure what it is. So the only way for him to figure out what it is, is to taste it put it in his mouth. So I like to stay subtle with shaky heads. Uh, you know, all green pumpkins not created equal. You know, this one Picasso green pumpkin here is very bright. So usually before I would throw this particular bait, I would dot it up again with some black magic marker. Uh, and then this one here is a nice dark green pumpkin color. And that's what I would usually be looking for, something dark, because if it's light, it's going to glow. And sometimes that, that's good. It, like if you're in dirty water or it's early in the morning when the light's low or it's a low light day, then a brighter shaky head sometimes adds a little flash that you may need to get the attention of the fish. I notice sometimes like if you put chartreuse on the tail of whatever shaky head it is that you're throwing, it works better in the morning than it does once the sun gets up. And then once the sun gets up, you don't want that chartreuse on the tail anymore. Of course, depending on the water color. And water color matters, you know. Just because you're throwing a shaky head doesn't mean you can't throw it in dirty water. You just have to adjust the color and the presentation that you're throwing. You want something a little bit louder. You want something a little bit with some chartreuse on it. Or a black, which stands out real good in dirty water and you may be the only one throwing it in dirty water and sometimes that may make the difference between you catching them and other people not catching them. So these are the things that you need to consider when it comes to shaky heads, where the line tie is, the weight of them again, you know, the lighter you're going to get a slower fall, more tantalizing fall, the heavier when you're trying to fish deeper or make a little bit more racket across the bottom and then, you know, uh, Regular size, I call regular size shaky head about an eighth of an ounce is what you're going to be using, 
you know, most of the time. As far as line size goes with a shaky head, you know, of course the big shaky heads, these big half ounce ones or three quarter ounce ones, you're probably going to need a little bit more line with them, 14 pound fluorocarbon, maybe 12, you probably could get away with 16 if you're around a lot of cover uh, with the bigger shaky heads. Uh, most shaky head, eighth ounces, five thirty seconds, three thirty seconds. I'm probably going with eight pound test fluorocarbon most of the time. Probably with a long leader, you know, a ten or twelve foot long leader, with you know ten or twelve pound braid main line with eight pound fluorocarbon. Sometimes I go to six pound fluorocarbon. And also, one thing to consider if you're skipping a shaky head like around docks and cover where you're just not casting it, but you're literally skipping it. If you've got fresh braid on your reel and a leader, you'll probably do okay. But that braid tends to get soft, you know, over time, depending on how much you use it, but gets soft over time. And I found that if you're skipping a shaky head, then you're almost better off with straight fluorocarbon on your reel than you are with a braid leader to fluorocarbon leader because that braid gets so soft it literally tends to fold up in your line guides and as soon as your shaky head hits the water on the first skip the line's moving faster than the bait and it stops the bait from skipping a lot of times where that fluorocarbon is stiffer it maintains its shape going through the line eyes of the the rod and it'll continue to skip out. So don't make that mistake if you're going to be skipping. Make sure you tie it up. Uh, you're tied up with full fluorocarbon. Uh, any other type of situation, probably a, a braid leader or a braid main line with a fluorocarbon leader. In high pressure situations, you know you may even go down to to six pound line. And uh, you know I tie personally. I like a double uni knot. Not going to get into how to tie that today. Uh, but any of the good braid to fluorocarbon knots, Albright knot, uh, jam knot, double uni knot are all going to work for you. Uh, so whatever is easiest for you to tie that you can tie well is what I would tie with those shaky heads. So again, if you like my content, you want to watch me on a regular basis, I'll be putting out, you know, I'm trying to put out one video a week right now. I can do more. Uh, when I get some more subscribers and build up the fan base a little bit more, I'll probably do two videos a week. But for now, we'll just stick with one. And I'll be talking about all kinds of things from tournaments that I fish to on the water videos to testing out some things. I'm going to do a couple, you know, coming up about what would happen if I throw this big giant swim bait all day long, you know, uh, and things like that. I want to do some more. I started a series on breaking down a lake, did a general presentation on that. I want to do some, some more uh, fine, I guess, finite uh, videos on which type of lakes there are and how do you break down the different types of lakes in the different seasons. Again, you know, I could go six different seasons on five different types of lakes. So there's 30 videos, you know, if, if people wanted to get that detailed, I could certainly do it. Let me know in the comments below if that's what you want me to do. If you guys have any other things that you want me to do a video on, and I have experience at it, so I wouldn't just be BSing you, uh, I would gladly do it. So again, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, put a comment in the bottom, and have a blessed day.